All right, Mothberg time once again, guys. We are going to open up our, there's a Tupperware container here with moths that we took, that Ricky and I took from the Keys. And what we're gonna do is, we're just gonna take a couple out at a time, because we don't wanna overdo it. But what I'm gonna do is, we are going to open up this Tupperware container, and we're gonna remove some of the specimens, and we're gonna go and mount them uh, together. So there's a couple bugs here. I'm not sure what exactly what I'm looking at. Uh, here's one I wanna mount for sure. Guys, this is Eumorpha vitis. One of the rarest moths in the Florida Keys right there, guys. We're gonna mount Eumorpha vitis together, and we're gonna have a good time. Uh, also, we have here a beautiful female Io moth that we caught. We did a video on her. She failed to lay me any eggs, which was disappointing, but we have a specimen. Anyway, so we're gonna mount her. Let's see what else we got in here. All right, that's not, that probably is good for now, guys. We'll do Eumorpha vitis and this female Io moth from the Florida Keys. We get our coveted Vine Sphinx, Eumorpha vitis. This is a rare moth, guys. Uh, only seen two of these in all of my life in Florida, both in Key Largo, but this was the first one that's ever come to one of my uh, mercury vapor lights in the, in the Florida Keys. So we're gonna put this beauty here and wait until tomorrow, and we'll go ahead and spread the wings on those two beauties. Coming up. Okay, Keys Moths fan, it's time. It's been 24 hours, and uh, we are going to mount one of the most special moths that I have been had the privilege of collecting in my 20-something years of this project. This is Eumorpha vitis, the Vine Sphinx. Only the second one we've ever taken in the Florida Keys, and this is an immaculate specimen and we are going to mount this girl, or actually guy, it's a male, uh, right now. And so we've got a few other ones that we're gonna get to in other videos. Make sure you subscribe. Uh, give me a like too, by the way. Subscribe, and we'll get to this curating action as we get into some of these really cool and actually very rare moths that we were finding down the Florida Keys. So, uh, but make sure we don't keep this off too long so the AC doesn't dry out our specimens. Okay. Now, the trick with mounting big Sphinx moths is you need a big enough spreading board to fit that big, thick, huge body. Okay. And that's, that they don't fit on normal spreading boards, guys. So what we, what we did is we got one of these monster boards and this one would fit just about any Lepidopteran. I mean, it's, it's a massive board. Uh, but the groove is right about the right size for the body of this moth. So, but before we do, one thing we're going to do is we are going to uh, sever the tendons on our Sphinx moth to make life on us as easy as possible. So I'm going to set my little tripod up here. And we're going to show you how we do that with our Sphinx Moth friend. All right, I got an X-Acto knife, guys. My trusty X-Acto knife. And we are going to, right, we're going to start with the hind wing right where this vein right here, if you can follow. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit. Okay. Right where this vein here connects to the thorax, right underneath that you hear that i just crunched that tendon so that that thing is a lot more free and pliable now okay same thing with the forewing you follow the front vein on the forewing costa all the way down to the thorax and right underneath that bam just cut that thing too so now we've got wings our our right side is done we're going to flip the specimen over and we're gonna do the same exact thing on the other side of the specimen. 
fore wing or hind wing. There you go. So, uh, trust me, guys, if you're going to get into curating uh, Sphinx moths as specimens, you want you want to learn how to do this trick because it's going to save you a lot of headache when you're trying to get those wings into the position that you want them. I'm going to use these these pins with these uh, glass heads on the top so that I can actually press them down into the wood without destroying my finger. But I'm gonna use a number two black enamel insect pin. All right, now the the Sphinx Moth, this, this guy actually has what looks like a saddle on his thorax and it makes it real easy because right at the, right where these two things make a point, that's where you're gonna put your pin inside okay and then you're gonna want your pin to come out dead smack in the middle on the bottom so now this is actually not perpendicular I actually put it in at too much of an angle so I got to reposition it there we go and that, my friends, is a properly placed pin. It's gonna be perpendicular on all sides. Sometimes these little scales can come off, especially when you touch the body. I'm gonna take the pins out from the abdomen, make a little bridge to prop the abdomen up into place. And now we have what looks like a perfectly mounted Eumorpha vitis, the vine sphinx, guys. What a beautiful moth. I'm so excited about this thing. Okay, so we have our Eumorpha vitis, our vine sphinx. Beautiful specimen. And we are going to, we have our label that we made. And so we pin that there. And we are gonna kind of pin this guy right in our little specimen box. Beautiful specimen here, guys, of our Eumorpha vitis. Look at that thing, man. <laughs> 